Let us pray. Almighty God, you pour out on all who desire it the spirit of grace and supplication. So deliver us as we come into your presence from cold hearts and wandering thoughts, that with steady minds and a burning zeal we may worship you in spirit and in truth. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to Annapolis Lutheran Church. We had a great crowd this morning at our early service, and it's so good to be with you and, and see this crowd as well. But just a couple of uh, announcements. Next Sunday will be our Christmas program, our youth Christmas program. That's going to be at 930 in the sanctuary, followed by cookies and coffee, the cookie sale for the youth group. So we hope that you can stay for that. That's next week at 930. Also, Adult Forum will continue in January. And I believe Pastor Miller will be leading that. Also in January, we will start back up our young adult Sunday school class. And you can define young adult uh, as, you, as you will. We won't put a number on that. It's mainly for, for the adults who drop off kids at Sunday school. And that will be meeting here in the back. What else do we have? Christmas Eve. All right, so Sunday, Christmas Eve is on a Sunday this year. So we will have one service Christmas Eve morning. That will be to observe Advent 4. That's going to be at 1030 on that Sunday, and then 7 o'clock p.m. will be our traditional Christmas candlelight service, and we'll be announcing that over the next couple of weeks through our information line and so forth. Okay, other announcements? I think I took Billy's thunder. Susie. Good morning. I'm just bringing to your attention again, if you're interested in making a Christmas dedication for poinsettias or for a donation to the Lutheran Mission Society Annapolis Compassion Center, I would like to have those donations in by Monday, December 18th. So this weekend and next weekend, just want to let you know that clock is ever ticking down. Have a great day. Thank you, Susie. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for worship with our prelude.
can stand. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us of all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister in the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with pure minds, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. The first reading for this second Sunday of Advent comes from the book of Isaiah, the 40th chapter, beginning with the first verse. Comfort, comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to hear her warfare, cry to hear that her warfare is ended and that her iniquity is pardoned and that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries, in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill, sh- will- hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry. And I said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Go on up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, fear not, say to the cities of Judah, behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom, and gently lead those that are with young. The word of the Lord. We will read responsibly Psalm 85. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. We have forgotten the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. You have withdrawn all your fury and turned yourself from your wrathful indignation. Restore us then, O God, our Savior. Let your anger depart from us. Will you be displeased with us forever? Will you prolong your anger from age to age? Will you not give us life? Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. 
The second lesson is from 2 Peter, the third chapter, beginning with verse 8. Do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that were done on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for the hasting and hasting for the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and new earth, in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish, and at peace. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way. The voice of the one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John appeared, baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locust and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated and let us pray. Gracious God, let the words of my mouth... And the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. The Bible is alive. The Bible is alive, wrote Martin Luther. It speaks to me. It has feet. It runs after me. It has hands. It lays a hold of me. There are three prominent themes, I think, today in our gospel which emerge which speaks to us and lays the gospel upon us. And that is fulfillment, baptism, and then lastly, worthiness. Fulfillment, baptism, and worthiness. We'll start with fulfillment. St. Augustine taught that what is concealed in the Old Testament books under the veil of earthly promises is clearly revealed in the teaching of the New Testament. Simply put, Simply put, God makes promises in the Old Testament to the Jewish people which come to fruition in the New Testament. Promises in the Old which are fulfilled in the New. Just look at our gospel passage for today. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled with the preaching of John the Baptist. But so but so are prophecies from Malachi and Ezekiel. All right, we'll start with Malachi. From Malachi chapter 4. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and hearts of children to their fathers. He will turn hearts. 
he will turn hearts. That sounds familiar. It sounds like John's message of repentance, does it not? John is also preaching on the hills of the, of the day that Jesus begins his public ministry, the day of the Lord. The fulfillment of this promise comes into sharper focus once we compare John and Elijah's appearance. We can't miss it if we do that, okay? From 2 Kings, we learn that Elijah wore a garment of hair with a belt of leather. That definitely should sound familiar. John fashions the same look. It's clear now that John the Baptist, it's clear that John the Baptist is not a reincarnated Elijah. But Malachi's prophetic promise is nonetheless fulfilled by the arrival and the preaching of John. Because consider what the angel in Luke 1 tells to John's father, Zechariah. In Luke 1, the angel comes to Zechariah, John's father, and says this, And he, John, will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. Again, sounds a lot like Malachi. And he will go before him in the spirit of and the power of Elijah. So John's preaching in the, in the power and the style and the spirit of Elijah marks the fulfillment of Malachi's prophecy. But there are more promises fulfilled in this text, in our, in our gospel passage. John claims that, he is, that he's going to baptize with water, but Jesus will baptize with the Holy Spirit. Now keep that in mind as we go to Ezekiel and read his prophecy. Channeling the voice of God, the prophet says, I will sprinkle clean water on you. Sprinkle water, that's obviously a reference to washing, to baptism. And you shall be clean from all your uncleanliness, and from your idols I will cleanse you. Here's the important part. And I will give you a new heart, a new spirit. A new spirit I will put within you. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes. And be careful to obey my rules. Now this, this, this sprinkling, this washing, this is not a routine washing ritual that the Jews would have done back then. This is a prophecy, a promise of something new, a new spirit. It sounds a lot like the baptism that John is saying that Jesus is going to do. A baptism with the Holy Spirit. The new the Holy Spirit. So while scripture contains these fulfilled promises and just Two or three of them right here. There's many more. We also can go to the scriptures and see God's pending promises. Promises that are made but not yet fulfilled. Like our second, our lead, our reading from 2 Peter today. We read, but according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. All right, so we're waiting for that promise to be fulfilled. And here we are, right? Here we are in this world where justice and righteousness certainly do not prevail. Certainly not. I don't have to explain that. We know that. So what do we do as we, as we wait for the fulfillment of this promise? What can we cling to as we wait for the fulfillment of this promise where righteousness and holiness and justice dwell? I know that we have some baseball fans here. Maybe. But how many, how many fans are so dedicated that they know the actual rules and criteria for the Baseball Hall of Fame. Does anybody know that? That's an extreme fan. One of the rules is no automatic elections. Okay, What that means is, I'll, I'll just read the rules so that you get an idea of what that means. No automatic elections based on performance, such as batting average of 400 or more for one year, and pitching a perfect game, or similar outstanding achievement. So... They can't get voted in if they've had one, one good season or one good game, right? What they're looking for is consistency, consistency. They're looking for a track record of consistency. God has a consistent track record of fulfilling promises. He does not just make a one-time splash. The track record. This track record of fulfillment is good news to us because it means that we can go to the scriptures, cling to them, and be reminded of God's fulfilled promises to give us strength, fortitude, and hope in God's pending promises. If he kept his promises before, he will keep them now for the promises that we await. 
we can have strength and fortitude and hope that the promise made in Second Peter, that, that the earth will one day be dwelled with righteousness and holiness and, and, and justice, we know, we can trust that's going to happen because of God's track record that he gives to us in his scriptures. So while God's fulfilled promises are good news to us as we await his pending promises, baptism also featured here in this gospel text further reveals the good news that lays a hold of us. So now while the tr- Christian tradition and doctrine of baptism certainly has its unique features, baptism or washing was not alien to the Jewish rituals and Jewish culture, religion. In the wilderness years, this is after they leave Egypt, right? the priests were required to wash, a ritual wash, so they could go into God's presence clean and holy. For they believed that God dwelled in the tent that they carried along with them where sacrifices were made to him. Once the temple was built, this presence transferred to the temple. God dwelled there. So any Jew who traveled along what is called Pilgrim's Road, they they traveled along Pilgrim's Road to the temple for the annual festivals, for the annual festivals, they also had to wash. They had to do this ritual wash, become ritually clean before they went into the temple and participated in these festivals. Now the washing could occur for other circumstances, but we know that that it was especially important before going into God's presence at the temple, partly because of what archaeology reveals to us. A mikvah is a tub of water. It's a tub that they put water in. 700 of these have been found in Israel, but 200 of them, 200 of them are found right in Jerusalem. And 50 of those, right at the foot of the temple. What does that tell you? You have to go through there before you can get to the temple. You have to go through there before you can get to the temple. So in short, to be before God, one had to be ritually clean and baptized, and if God dwelled in the temple, therefore you had to be clean before you went into the temple. Now think about this as we we read today's gospel passage where John is calling people to wash and be baptized. Perhaps John is calling for ritual washing, ritual baptism, not because, not because they are going to the temple, going along Pilgrim's Road to the temple to meet God, but because God in the flesh is coming to them. Wash because God is coming to them in the flesh. Of course, we know from John chapter 1 that God in the flesh is the new temple. His presence, Jesus' presence is God's presence. When I first moved to the area, I was cautioned to pay attention when I was on the Bay Bridge because, as you know, the arrows sometimes change, right? From westbound to eastbound, you got to pay attention to those, right? So they switch, they change, they reverse. I think the good news of this baptism that John is preaching is it signals that the, that the direction of Pilgrim's Road has been reversed. The direction of Pilgrim's Road has been reversed. It's not us traveling to meet God, but God traveling to meet us. But God traveling to meet us. That's exactly what our first reading says. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. A highway for our God to travel to us. And this continues even today. This continues even today. Now, we believe that we're only baptized once, and that's efficacious. The Holy Spirit comes to us. But we place the baptismal font right there for a very particular reason, in front of the altar. It's like a Christian mikvah, if you will, to remind ourselves that we have been made clean through the Holy Spirit and thus can come into the presence of God, the Son, Jesus Christ, again at this table for Holy Communion. Before we come to God's presence, we're reminded of our cleanliness through our baptism. Is it like a Christian mikvah ritual? Finally, we come to the theme of worthiness. Worthiness. After me comes who after me comes he who is mightier than I, declares John. Whose sandals I am not worthy 
to stoop down and untie. What John is saying here is that he's not significant enough. He's not significant enough even to be a slave to Jesus. Because that's what the putting the sandals on, tying the sandals was the job of a slave. He's not significant enough even to do that. And you know what? Technically, he's correct. Technically, he's correct. We as fallen human creatures who have rebelled against God Almighty, our Creator, should be insignificant to God. We should not be worth his time. Yet, despite that, despite the rebellion, despite the sin, while we were still sinners, while we were still in rebellion, as Paul teaches in Romans, Christ died for us. Christ died for us. Mark chapter 10. God in the flesh as Jesus Christ came not to the world to be served, but to what? To serve and give his life as a ransom for many. Give his life as a ransom for many. Now the good news here, the good news here is we may not be worthy to stand before God on our own merit by our own effort, but we are nonetheless, we are nonetheless worth the life of God's Son, Jesus Christ. We are worth that. We are worth his life. We are worth the life of Jesus Christ. We were bought with a price. We were bought with the precious blood of Christ. My life then, your life, our life together here certainly matters because of this. And this is the good news that speaks to us. This is the good news that runs us down. And this is the good news that lays a hold of us. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to prepare the way for your only Son. By his coming, give us strength in our conflicts and shed light on our path through the darkness of this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, your Son made well all who are sick in mind, body, or spirit. Please bless with your healing touch touching presence, Tracy Bathgate, Pam Belt, Garrett Brown, Mary Helen Kugel, Connie Krupe, Margaret Kowalski, Jacob Heffer, Barbara Lambert, Oliver Wade Hall, Isabel Taylor, Adam Taylor, Kathy Ogle, Helen Parker, Frank Williamson, Nicholas Williams, Melanie Warren, Carl Toensmeyer, Kelly Jackson, Jax Floyd, Gina Heath, Jim Shriver, Edward Hecker, Alex Stout, Fred Brandt, Pastor Bill White, Armgard Bishop, Robin Zayer Morgan, William Walling, Jennifer Trombauer, Bridget and Donald Fleischhauer, Susie Descores, Randy Hayden, and those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, comfort with your presence, all who are homebound or alone, especially Fran Watkins and Henrietta Connolly. Remind them you are always with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, bless our sister mission region partner, St. James Lutheran Church in Muncie, Pennsylvania. Bless them as you have blessed us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, continue to sustain the leaders and people of Ukraine and the people of Israel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, we are again seeing extreme weather that has caused wildfires and floods. Please sustain all those affected and grant them strength and courage to recover. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share the peace of Christ.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we're humble and thankful for your Holy Spirit that calls us and gathers us together to be enlightened through your word. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing upon our choir that good news may be proclaimed through song and praise. In your name we pray. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful Father, we ought to The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is indeed our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and ever-living God. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes again to judge the world in righteousness. 
And so now with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, in mercy for our fallen world, you gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation that you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith, as he comes to us in his holy supper. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. We do not presume to come to this, your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remember us then in your Lord, remember us, Lord, in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. gifts of God, for the people of God. Come taste and see that our Lord is good. Amen.
please stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you gave your son both as a sacrifice for sin and a model of the godly life. Enable us to receive him always with thanksgiving and to conform our lives to his. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Next week, Children's Christmas Program, 9.30 here in the sanctuary, followed by coffee and a cookie sale. Before we leave, I've been told by, uh, I've been told that there's a birthday today, and her husband says it's the age of a speed limit. So, 
whichever speed limit that is, you can you can use your imagination. It's Ellen Fehrenbacher's birthday today, so happy birthday to Ellen.